everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a black Labrador in pastels. Now this is a recent pet portrait commission that I was asked to do and like with any portrait I will always start off with the eyes first. Now the only exception there is if I am required to do some kind of background. So for this portrait I did create a glow effect background where I had a lighter centre around the dog and then I darkened my edges. Now this here, this effect, is something that I'm asked how to create fairly frequently. So I actually have three tutorials on Patreon showing different methods of how you can create that glow effect background. Now it's only when I am happy with the eye that I will then start mapping in the fur. Now I like to work in small sections so that I personally don't rush any specific layer. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we do have to work in small sections, but if you do find yourself becoming overwhelmed by the section you're working on, it's usually because we're focusing on too much of a larger area. Try to really break that up into small manageable chunks. Now I actually have quite a few tutorials here on YouTube that show tips and techniques for drawing black fur. And regardless of the coat length, so if I was drawing a black German Shepherd or something like this with a shorter coat, a Labrador, the layering process is still going to be from dark to light. This here is going to be the best way of getting the most out of the contrast. And the reason being is when we draw black fur, we usually have a little bit more of that cautious tendency to not put down a dark enough base layer. Now the problem with that is you'll end up with a dog that looks more of a grey rather than a black coat. So we do really want to make sure that the very first layer is dark enough. And the other reason for this is you could start layering your details on top and feel that you're confident with the lighter pencils that you're using but they're not showing up as you would like. And this goes back to the base layer stage. Sometimes those details will not be visible because the base layer underneath isn't dark enough. As soon as you darken up that layer, your details with your lighter pencils will be more visible. And because the layering process and the contrast are two things that are so important to how realistic our portraits are going to look, this is something that I focus on thoroughly in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. Now something else that I really do focus on is pencil technique. And that's something that you can see right from the very first layer here. I did decide to do this black Labrador all in pastel pencils. I do have some pan pastels and soft pastel sticks, but I like to use a range of techniques here to show that you don't need to have every single pastel supply to create portraits. So the pastel pencils that I'm using, at these very first base layer stages, I'm still focusing on the three main pencil techniques. So I'm focusing on fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now at this first few stages, it is mainly the fur direction and fur length that I'm focusing on. The thickness of those pencil strokes for the first two or three layers aren't quite my priority, but it is something that you want to be conscious of. However, the fur direction at that stage, if you're using the pencils from the very beginning, are really going to build up that structure of the face. The fur direction, just like the placement of the shadows and highlights, they're not random. They follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. So you can see here as I'm working on the top section above her eye, that fur is curving over her eye down towards where her ear is going to be. This is going to help to build up the shape of her skull. If we don't get the pencil strokes curving in the right way, we're either going to make the head look really wide or quite narrow. So this here is something that I do put a lot of focus on. And if you would like to see any of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon showing how to layer and draw black fur, then I'll link that in the description below. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, this was a portrait that I was asked to do, so this isn't available as a full length tutorial on Patreon, but I am more than happy to upload a section of this to really focus on how to layer black fur. So if you would like to see that here on YouTube, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to get that tutorial created for you. However, I do have lots of tutorials on Patreon that do show in depth and step by step on how to draw black fur. So as I've said, if any of that is of interest, my Patreon is linked in the description below. So when it comes to the nose here, building up the shape is really important. I've got quite a few tutorials here on YouTube that show how to draw different noses of different colours. So if that's of interest, I'll pop those in the description below. But the first priority for me is I want to make sure that I've captured the shape and the three dimensional look of that nose. 
the more layers we add and we build up our contrast, so our dark shadows and bright highlights, that three dimensional shape will develop. But to start with here, by mapping in the nostrils and curving my highlights on the lower edge of that nostril, I'm able to build up the, the natural curve of that nose. Now this here is something that's really important. Once I'm happy with that, that's when I can start putting in my highlights and reinforcing my shadows. Now a big tip and something that would also be relevant when drawing fur is we don't want to be jumping into our brightest highlights early on. If I were to have included those tiny little white dots and the highlights on the top of the nose first, I wouldn't then have any additional highlights to build up to. So I always want to be looking at the reference photo and noticing the tiny dark mid-tone and shadow variations around those highlights and that's what I will start off with. Once I'm happy with the nose, that's when I can start working on the fur of the muzzle. This here is really important in terms of the pencil technique and this is something that I spoke about at the beginning of the tutorial. Pencil and the fur length, fur direction and fur thickness are all crucial. Now here my pencil strokes are significantly shorter because the fur needs to look shorter on the bridge of the nose. If I were to make my pencil strokes the same length here as what I have on the top of her head, it's just going to make the nose look really fluffy. Now for certain breeds, like maybe cockapoos, that would be perfect. But Labradors, German Shepherds, breeds like that, they are going to have shorter fur strokes around their nose and mouth. So this here is something to pay very close attention to. The fur direction will remain the same in terms of making sure that every change of that direction is mapped in as best as we can. Now of course in terms of that, the larger scale you're working on, the easier it is to add all of those directional changes. But if you're working on a smaller scale, be sure to add in maybe two or three. You might not have enough space to add all of them, but you can certainly add the main directional changes which help to build up the shape of the face. Now this portrait was 12 by 16 inches, so it's not small, but it's not massive either. But this is certainly a really nice size if you do want to start getting a little bit more confident with building up the shape of the face and focusing on fur direction, this size here is really nice to work with. The one thing here that's so important is I want to be making sure that every single layer, each section of that dog's face is given the amount of time that it deserves. So for instance, the nose or maybe even the mouth area, we might not enjoy drawing those areas of that portrait as much as building up all of the details in the fur, but they are just as important. If the fur of that animal looks really good, nice and detailed, but the nose is lacking because we haven't allowed enough time or we've sped past certain layers, it will bring the entire portrait down and that's just a real shame. And what I recommend with those situations where you know maybe you are rushing it a little bit more, you're skipping out on some layers, take a step back, maybe put that drawing away for half an hour, an hour, maybe even a day or two and look at it again with fresh eyes. You'll find then that you're probably more refreshed, you haven't been staring at that drawing for however many hours and you're more than likely to give that area of that portrait the amount of time that it deserves. So before we move on now to the rest of the portrait, if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far in this video have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up, it makes a huge difference to my channel, I'd be really really grateful. Now the other thing that I want to quickly mention is I do have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur, I'll link that in the description below if that's of interest as well. And there I talk through all of the techniques that I use in my own work to add as much detail and depth to my pet portraits. Now when it comes to drawing collars, this here is one of the areas where I think definitely we could end up rushing this element. Here, the, the fabric and the way that we need to create that texture can be quite overwhelming. This is where I then strip that down to individual layers. I'm not focusing on that fluffier sort of fabric texture, I'm just looking at my lights and my darks. Once I've got that initial pink foundation in where I'm hinting at my lights and my darks, I'm then going to map in the pattern on that collar. Then I can reinforce my highlights and shadows around that and build up the curve and the way that that's then shaped to the neck. Now the one thing here as well that's really important is if you look at how narrow that collar is in comparison to some areas of her face, it's really quite small. 
So there I'm not going to be able to add in all of the individual details, the small fibres that we can see in the reference photo because when we're working on that scale of this portrait we just don't have the right amount of space. Now if I was working on something that was maybe 30 by 40 inches and significantly bigger, that collar there is obviously going to be scaled up. I'd have a lot more room there to add individual little hairs maybe or fibres of that fabric. So be really aware of how much detail is required on the area that you're working on. I always as well recommend to draw whatever is behind the fur first. So because a lot of this fur on the top section of the collar is overlapping because the coat as we go down towards the chest is longer, it will sit on top of that buckle and the fabric. So if I was to have drawn the fur first and then added the collar, I'm going to have to draw around the details of the fur and that there can end up with something that looks a little bit two dimensional and it can become very obvious that you've drawn around the hair. So that there's something that I personally don't like to do. I'd always want to map in the collar first, get that done and then I can layer the details of the fur over the top. Now that's also why at the moment, and you'll see when I reposition my camera shortly, that I leave the silver tag right until the very last element. And that's because that sat on top of the fur. So I don't necessarily mind that the edges of that tag are a little bit um, jagged, a bit bumpy, where I've gone in with the black fur. Because I can tidy all of that up by overlapping my highlights for the silver pink sort of reflection in the tag on top. So that there again is something to be really aware of. If I were to have spent the time, the whatever, however long it took, the half an hour to put in that tag and then added in the fur over the top and accidentally added in some fur details that were over the silver tag, then I'm gonna make that tag look like it's within the fur. Now, if you've got a really long coated dog, something like a um, Afghan hound or something like that, you may not necessarily see that tag at all because the fur is exceptionally long. You may then have clumps of hair that are overlapping the tag completely. But with something like this, this tag was sat on the top. There was no fur that was overlapping. So I therefore made the decision to leave that tag until the very last element, which is when I also draw the final whiskers and details at the end. Now in terms of getting a soft edge at the lower part of the chest where it fades into the paper, there you saw me using a paintbrush. Now that there is a really good technique because it just spreads a really fine layer of that pastel that you've already applied and you can then just direct that by following the fur direction for that part of the lower section of chest. I just find there that gives me a bit more of a softer look rather than using soft tools or a makeup sponge. That there and the way that it fades out is going to be very subjective to each artist. Some artists like to leave a little bit more of a harsher edge along the bottom of the chest and there really is no right or wrong answer, but I personally just like to have a little bit more of a softness and a gradual fade of that fur into the paper that I'm using or my background of choice. So now that I'm pretty much done, the last thing, as I've said, will be the tag and then any whiskers. Now the whiskers I always leave to the last layer because they do overlap everything else. If we draw the whiskers in too soon and then realise we've got sections of the fur underneath it that aren't quite finished, we're again going to have to draw around those details. So it's always best to leave the whiskers until the very last layer. So here is a photo of my finished portrait. I really do hope that this tutorial has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It makes a huge difference to my channel. And I upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. This week has been an exception. I've had issues with my video editing software, not wanting to cooperate at all. I'm hoping that I've now got that sorted. Um, so I will be back to my normal schedule next week. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if any of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon are of interest, then that is all linked in the description below. Now I also have a Patreon library on my website which is also linked in the description and that there has a list of all tutorials that can be found on my Patreon so you get an idea of what sort of content is there before you join. Now Patreon is really flexible so you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. And as always thank you so much for watching.